Hi everyone, this is Alejandra. In the last few weeks, I show you how to combine different files that have different number of sheets with different layouts, but with the same columns. Today, I'm gonna show you how to combine different files with different number of sheets with different layout and different columns. If you like what you see here, remember to subscribe and let's get this done. Okay, I'm gonna start by showing you the files. Here I have some two. This has three stores. We have the sales for those stores from the year 2017 to 2021. We, we have five year sales. So, but you can see that the layouts on these uh, sheets are quite different. Some of them start in different line or different column. This is zone one. I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna show you zone two. Zone two has only one store, which is store four. And you can see there is a note here that the store was closed in 2019. So we only have four columns. We are missing the year 2019. I'm gonna close it. Zone three has two stores, store five and store six, same thing, different layout. And this store start operating in 2018. So we don't have 2017 column. And store six is newer, uh, start operating in 2019. So I'm, we're missing two columns from there. Okay, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open a new workbook data, get data from file from workbook. I'm gonna go a little bit quick on these steps as I already have two tutorials showing you the first part of this process. If you want to take a look to those tutorials and review each step with more detail, I'm gonna leave the link here on top of the screen so you can take a look. I'm gonna choose one file here and let's say, let's choose zone three. The navigator is gonna show me the content of that file. And as I show you, it has two sheets. And uh, let's choose store six, transform data. And the Power Query editor will open. Uh, I'm using Microsoft 365. Here, Power Query already applied some steps. I don't want to change the type yet. I'm gonna delete that. Also promote headers already, but these are not the correct headers. So I'm gonna delete that step as well. And I'm gonna start from the navigation step. Let's go to add column, index column from one, so I can assign a number to my headers. In this case, it's number four. I want to keep my headers well identified. So I will select item, right click, text filters, equals. This is my line and this is the index, right click, drill down, it created a step for that number. One thing that I always forget is to create one step after the navigation. So I will right click, insert step, and now I say insert. And I'm gonna rename this as start. This will be a point where I want to go back. Let's get back to our index step. So now I have that number well identified. Let's create one step after you can click here at the formula bar where the FX is. It says add the step, click there. Here is my step, right click, rename. And I'm gonna call this uh, back to start. Enter. And this step is referring to index. I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna refer to my step start, enter. Uh, remember, Power Query is case sensitive. Make sure that you write this in the same way that you rename your step here. Now I'm back to the starting point. I'm gonna delete the first three rows because I just want to keep my headers. So I go here to, I stay here on the home tab, remove rows, remove top rows, and it's gonna be the first three rows, enter. I'm gonna make this, this dynamic. I'm gonna delete the three. Uh, that is hard coded and I'm gonna replace it by index minus one, enter. Now this is dynamic, okay? Now we have our headers as first line. Let's go here to this little table, click there, use first row as headers. We have promoted our first line as headers, but Power Query created another step changing the type. I don't need that right now because everything is hard coded and this is not gonna work with my other sheets where I have different years or different columns. I'm gonna remove that step. I stay here on the promoted headers. And the next thing that I need to watch for 
is this total. All the sheets have a total of the sales. I don't want that when I consolidate all the sheets. So I go here to item, click at the row, and let's go to the end, remove the check mark in total, say okay. Okay. Now this is the information that I need is correct. Let's do one more thing. Here select the item column, right click and select on pivot other column. This is different from the previous tutorials. We didn't do this step before. Now we're ready to create our function. First, let me rename this query. It's gonna be songs. Those are my files. I right click to that query and I duplicate. Here, I'm gonna rename this query and I'm gonna call it fx songs, enter. Now let's convert this to a function. On the view tab, advanced editor, I'm gonna click just beside let, I'm gonna two or three enters. I just need to clear some space on the top. I'm gonna open and close parentheses equals greater than. By doing this, Power Query understands that this is a function, but I'm gonna provide two parameters. The first parameter will be my path, and the second parameter will be my names. My path refers to this information, is where my file is coming from. So I'm gonna delete the information that I have there, and I'm gonna replace by my path. Again, Power Query is a case sensitive, so make sure that you spell things correctly, otherwise your uh, function is gonna give you an error. And the second parameter will be the name of the sheet. So I'm gonna select that, Control C to copy, and I'm gonna replace Store 6, that is the sheet that we work with, I'm gonna replace it, I'm gonna delete that, and paste my names. Okay, this is ready to go, I say done. This has become a function. Here are all the steps that we just applied to the first query. Okay, you don't see the steps here, but you see them here on the top. Okay, now let's call all our files. Here on the query section, right click, new query, file, folder. This is the folder where we have all our files. Say open. These are the three files that we need. Transform data, don't combine and transform yet. Let's go to transform data. Okay, here I have the information that I need. First thing, good practice is to convert this. Right click to this column and let's transform to uppercase. Uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter as long you have the same for all of them. And I'm gonna filter, click at the row, text filter equals, and it must equal dot x, s, x. And I say okay. And here on the name column, select that, click at the a row, text filter uh, begins with, and begins with song. I want to make sure that if in the future I have another file that doesn't refer to the zones, it won't be captured on this process. Say, okay. Also, I want to make sure that I don't bring any open files, so I go back to the filter, text filter does not begin with, and does not begin with this tilde. There it is, this one. I say, okay. Now let's select a column name, Go to the end, press control and hold it, and select folder path. Right click and remove other columns. Okay, now select, let me open this one a little bit more. Select the folder path, press and hold control, select the name column, go to transform, and let's merge columns. And the name of that column will be my path. That is the information that I'm gonna provide to my function. I say, okay. Now you can see that the information has been merged and it contains where my files are located and the names of the file. Make sure that you merge in this order, otherwise the function is not gonna work. Okay, um, I have that information here. Let me add another column, custom column, and this is gonna be my sheets or my, yeah, my sheet. This is gonna say that it's gonna bring information from a workbook, Excel.workbook, open parenthesis, 
and I need the content of those workbooks. So contents to find that is file dot contents. Open parentheses and it's asking me for the path. That is going to be my path. So double click there, close parentheses uh, for the file contents and close parentheses for the Excel dot workbook. Say OK. Here you can see the sheets that each um, file has. Now let's expand. Click here at the two rows and let's remove use original column name as prefix and let's select only the name and the kind. I want to bring the name of the sheet and I want to bring the kind. I want to make sure that I'm bringing sheets. Say OK. Here on the kind column, click there and let's filter, text filter equals sheet. I want to make sure that I only bring sheet. Say OK. I can delete this column. Now I have all my sheets, right? So store one to six. That is what I need. Let's invoke our function. Let's go to add column in both custom function and the function is fx zones. Go here, my path, my path will be the column name, my path, and my names will be a column name, name. Say OK. It brings all that information right here. And I'm going to say this is correct. So I'm going to expand that. I want to bring all the columns. I say OK. Here I have the where this file is coming from, the sheet name and uh, the item. All the years are on this column and the value has all the amounts. OK, so I'm going to remove this my path. I don't need it anymore. I want to keep the store because otherwise it's going to be very confusing to know uh, where these items are coming from. So here we have all our information. Now, let me just rename this column. This is going to be the year. And this is going to be the amount. Now I have this information ready to load to Excel. I go to home, close and load, close and load to. I only want to create connection. Say OK. Here are my queries. Let me load this query here. Load to. Let's load, load this to a pivot table. I say OK. I have the item on the rows, the amount on the values, and the year on the columns. These are all the items. These are all the years. And let me remove this grand total. We don't need that. And let's move and bring the name of the sheet on the rows. So you can see that store one. Let me collapse all of this. Collapse entire field. So here we have store four, which didn't have any sales in 2019. Also, store five didn't have any sales in 2017. And store six didn't have any sales in 2017 and 19. This is one way to bring it. Uh, let me just value field just to make it easier to, to see. And number here. And say OK. So this is one way to bring the information. And let's say if you want to expand, you have all the item numbers here. We can go to design, report layout, show in tabular form. It's a little bit easier to see. You can see all the items and all the years, same thing here, and so on. So let's say you don't want to create a pivot table. You wanted to bring a table with all the information with the years on top. Okay. Um, my preference is to do it in the way that I show you and then create the pivot table. But if you prefer to bring the table, I'm going to go back to my queries, right click on my query demo, load to. And if I load it as is as table on A1, I say, OK, it will overwrite the pivot table. This is the information that we have from those tables. This is not the presentation that you want for your table. Let's go back to our query. Double click on the demo. Uh, query, let's change the layout. Select the column year, go to transform and select pivot column. We're going to pivot that information based on this column and the values that we want to bring is the amount. It's OK. Here we have each year on top 
so you can have the information in that presentation without doing a pivot table. Let's go to the, our home tab, close and load. Our table will update with the store name or the sheet name, the item number, and here you have the 2017, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Now let's say store four is the one that didn't have any sales uh, in 2019. Select the store four, say okay, and you can see that that column is blank, okay? Now let's see what happens if I add a column to our original files. Let me select all the stores. And let me open the file zone two with the store four. And I'm gonna add, let's say 2022. And I'm gonna just put some random information here. Let's say I want this information times 1.1. And let's say, let's add all of that. I want to start from the four. Let's save it, close it, go back to our table, right click, refresh. Now you see that we have one more column, 2022. And let's take a look. Let's remove the blanks. So you can see which store has that column and it is our store number four. Now let's see what happens if I delete one column on the existing files, okay? Let me remove this filter right here. Let's go and open zone one. And let's say store two, let's remove three years, 2018 to 2020, control minus to delete. So for store two, I will have only 2017 and 2021. I save that, I close that and I save it. Go back to our table, right click, refresh. And now you can see that store two has only information for 2017 and 2021. Everything else is blank. All the steps were like that quick. Very nice, right? I hope you found this information useful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, share with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.